just because you're passionate about something or you love something, I, I mean, there's so many things that you have to be good at yeah. to sustain a business, mm. which mm-hmm. is the non-glamorous side right, right. Of, the, <laughs> of the circus yeah. because, you know, it's a family business. So it means that rather than having somebody that is qualified in that area to come and do that, it's like, hey, right, you're the brother, you're going to go do it. Right, or, right. you know, right, you're my wife, so you're going to do this. And, right. you know, so it's a team effort. Mm. You're listening to The Aerial Hour, episode number 25. The Aerial Hour is a traveling podcast where I interview aerial entrepreneurs from all corners of our industry on how they grow and sustain their businesses. Hey there, friends. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Aerial Hour. I'm your traveling host, Tara, and today I am currently in advanced North Carolina, which isn't really near anything. It's about an hour north of Charlotte. If you're tuning in for the first time, thank you so much for checking us out. This show features interviews from aerial and pole businesses or entrepreneurs who are making things work. My hope is that you walk away from each episode with a little bit more knowledge about our industry. Before I get to today's interview, let me share with you all the things. First, let me share with you this week's featured review. This week's featured review comes from Hello Poll, and it's titled, An Amazing Podcast. They say, the first episode I listened to was episode 21 featuring Colleen Jolly, where I learned about virtual PollCon and IPIA. Since then, I've listened to the entire series, and I'm completely in love with the show. It's incredible to hear all the stories of the people in the poll and aerial industry. The show is educational, and it's truly inspiring. Tara is a fantastic host, and so much hard work is built into creating this amazing show. If you're new to the community, this is a great way to learn about people in the industry. I highly recommend everyone to listen. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Hello Poll. We really appreciate it. And if you'd like to support the show and have your review featured, share your thoughts with us on either or both Apple Podcast and the Facebook. And now, today's guest is the incredible Laura Dunn of Circus España in Greenville, Texas. Laura is a professional dancer turned aerialist. On a job in the United States, she had the opportunity to work with the circus. This is where she fell in love. She started training for different acts, including working with her now husband in a death-defying motorcycle slash aerial act. So I think you could say that she ran away and married the circus. Before I actually play the tape, I feel I need to set the scene for this interview because it's one of the most magnificent stories of connection that we've experienced since hitting the road. So picture this. We're out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, Texas, and Phil is searching for a printer. He did what he always does and went to Craigslist and Facebook, and that's where he found Laura. He was like, hey, I found this printer, and it seems legit. I looked at the person, and they're actually an aerialist. And I was like, what? An aerialist? Really out here? Uh, So I looked at her profile, and sure enough, she had these incredible pictures, and I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll go with you. So we hop in the truck the next day, and we head out to Greenville, Texas. And I want to say it was probably like an hour from wherever we were at at the time. And we pull into what we believe is her driveway and there's like a I think it's called like the cage of death it's those big steel circular uh, cages that motorcycles ride around in there was literally one of those in the driveway we pulled into so we get into the driveway and a woman comes out and she's like oh can I help you and we said oh we're looking for Laura we're picking up a printer and she goes oh no you're like you need to go two houses down So we pull back out and pull in the driveway and we see like a whole bunch of RVs in the back and a um, trapeze rig and an aerial rig. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm in heaven. (laughs) So we go and meet her and just start chatting with her. And she's like 
super, super sweet and kind person. So we really were just enjoying the conversation. And of course, I had to mention the show and asked her if she would come on and uh, let me come back to her house and hang out for a bit. And so that's what we did. Uh, It was one of the most random meetings, but I really feel that Uh, She's got a ton of experience from everything from operating the back end of a circus to costuming to working with different acts and different peoples to actually starting a program in Greenville uh, for Ariel. So it's all really exciting and I can't wait to share this episode with you. So without further ado, Phil, do the thing. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another episode of the Aerial Hour. Today, I am in Greenville, Texas, yes, with Laura Dunn, and we're going to talk about all things circus. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, quick background on how we met, because it's (laughs) totally random. Um, The universe brings people together. Uh, my husband, Phil, needed a printer, so he went where he always goes, to Facebook Marketplace, and he found you, and <laughs> yeah. we ended up purchasing a printer from you out in the middle of Texas. Super random, and we're total creeps because we look at anybody that we purchase something <laughs> from. We like go and look at their profile and see who they are, and when Phil looked it up, he mentioned that you were an aerialist yeah. and that... I should come and talk to you. And you were so sweet. You sold us a great printer. It works. Good. I'm so glad. I (laughs) didn't actually ask you. That was too good. Yeah. Great. I love that printer. Oh, good. Good. (laughs) We're going to give it a good home. So it's in good hands. But yeah. So once I found out that you're in a circus and doing all these amazing things, I knew I had to ask if you'd be on the show. I'm so grateful that we get to sit down and chat. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So how long have you been an aerialist for? So I began my aerial training in 2014. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I've only ever trained uh, in the United States. So oh. in when I was in England, I never never done anything it was just dance and that was it okay and Mm. how long had you danced for oh since I was a kid um I started dancing when I was uh maybe around six okay you know did a lot of uh different shows did a lot of different types I studied it at college uni nice um yeah and then then I actually went on to sort of travel with the dancing as a job so very ended cool. up in India and around Europe, loads of crazy different places. And that's what actually brought me here to the States, to okay. the circus. How did you get over here? Just dancing yeah. with the troupe? Or? Yeah, so I was in India and I was dancing for Bollywood movies. Wow, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, it was really, it was such a, an amazing experience. Wow. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, and then I saw a job pop up um, for the circus in the United States. And I'd always wanted to come here and travel because that's kind of like why I love what I do because I get to see the whole world. Yeah. And that's why I want to do it for, yeah. you know, as well as getting to perform and everything else. Right. So, yeah, so I saw uh, they wanted a dance troupe for a Hispanic show called uh, Circo Hermanos Vasquez. And uh, I got the job. I applied for it and I got it. And then I, I came January 2014. Okay. And is that was your first introduction to yes. circus? Or, yeah. yeah? Okay. Absolutely. And um, you- before that, I'd never been to the circus as a kid. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, nothing. I'd never even seen a, a lira or, wow. you know, silks. Nothing. Wow. Yeah, it was my first experience. <laughs> what made you fall in love with it? Oh, my God. It was magical. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was like... It it blew my mind actually mm. so when we first got there Vasquez the the show that we were working with they just opened a brand new tent and it was beautiful yeah. like it was like a theater inside mm. 2,000 seats wow. um, I know it was gorgeous wow. and they put out all the stops so oh. yeah the circus acts they have were from like all around the world like mm. they had like Monte Carlo winners wow. it was it was incredible and I sat there <laughs> and I felt very talentless because I was, we were there during the rehearsals and we watched the whole thing in the seats and I had my mouth open. Like I just couldn't believe it mm-hmm. from everything. And, you know, they just had, it was just amazing. And the, my favorite things, ironically, were the things that my now husband 
was doing. Oh, really? Yeah. So he was in that show. He was doing the Russian swing okay. with his family troupe. Wow. Uh, it's like a family act that just they really have. Okay. Uh, it's like a motorcycle on a platform. Oh my gosh. Yeah, in the air. And oh, and it was so high up. It was like 80 feet in the air. Whoa. And Wait, yeah. 80 feet? Yeah, because the tent is huge. It's, That's nuts. It's massive. Yeah, and I was just like, oh my God, I want to do that. Yeah. That, that's what I was thinking. I was yeah. like, I really want to do that. How did you make the transition from being in the dance troupe to like getting into the circus part? Yeah, so, well, well, obviously we made friends with everybody. Right, um, right. We share dressing rooms and and just, you know, talking to people and everybody wants to let you have a go. Okay, you know, so okay. like the first thing was like, oh my God, I love your Russian swing. Like, oh, I really want to have a go. And, and they're like, okay. So they just set everything up and they're like, okay, get on. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so there was a lot of, there was one lady in particular that was there and her and her husband, they have like a, a dog act, rescue dogs. Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And she'd been an aerialist. She's Russian for many years. She came over with a troop. Like she was incredible. Yeah. And so it first started with like stretching competitions. Okay. So we would stretch and stretch and stretch. And then she was like, oh, you guys should, you know, go out there and, and do mm. something. So as a dance troupe, we decided to find local circus studios and go and try Lyra and, and Silks. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And from then on, you were like, I love this. Yeah, yeah. I love the Silks. Like, okay. So actually, we started to take a, a lot of classes, like three, four times a week. Wow. And we do privates with just like the five of us. And it was so cool because every town we went to, we would start a new one. So the first one I went to, which is so weird now, actually, the first one we went to was Lone Star Circus. Oh, really? Yes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that was my first ever lesson. And now I work what there. What a small world. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And and, you know, so we went from there and then we went to Houston and then Chicago. And there's so many cool studios yeah. that we you get like this crash course as well as being at the circus and doing the strength training yeah. and doing the stretching. And, you know, everybody backstage is like doing all these cool things like, yeah. you know, balancing and bending. And so you're just immersed in it like 360. That's amazing. Yeah. What an incredible journey. Yeah. And, and now you're... Is it a different circus now that you're a part of? Yeah. yeah. So, well, so when once we'd done that one year and I was a dancer there, my husband had a two-year contract there. Mm -hmm. So um, he said, hey, you want to come work with me? <laughs> were you guys year? dating at this point? Yeah, okay. we, we were dating. And I was like, what should we, you know, should I go home or do you know what? And uh, he was like, come back next year and come and be in my troupe. Mm. And I was like, okay. So yeah. I started off by just, uh, pushing on the Russian swing. Okay. So there's there was always like kind of two females in their troupe. Okay. That would uh, help push. And, yeah. And then it just so happened that it was the guys that jumped. Okay. And then, so he used to do that motorcycle on the platform mm -hmm. with his cousin's wife. Okay. And the very first weekend of that year, the 2015 tour, she dislocated her shoulder. Oh, no. And yes. So you? Yes. Yes? Yes. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't ready. No. no. Is anybody, I mean, yeah. I guess he was ready, but yeah. could anybody be? Wow. No, I know. So to begin with, there was another <laughs> woman that was there. She was a husband of the clown and she jumped straight in. Okay. And then I trained for about maybe a month. Um, every day yeah. yeah because the classes that I had done I mean they definitely helped yeah but they hadn't really prepared me for that no um, <laughs> what does <laughs> like, I know insane. it was insane yeah. it was it was and now I think about it because honestly when I first came to the circus I was terrified of heights oh <laughs> yeah I know I know it was yeah, but but the second year we were in their second tent so okay. it wasn't 80 feet okay, in the air. okay it was more like maybe 40 oh so no big deal just it was it was still really high yeah. but it wasn't you know what a cool experience oh, oh my god yeah, yeah. I, I loved it I loved it it was just like you just can't buy that kind of experience no no I mean just and so you continued on yeah. and 
you and him have now started a circus, correct? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So since then we worked for sort of lots of different places. And then, um, so my husband, Vishan, his father, uh, has always wanted to own a circus. And so he was working with another circus. He was saving, he bought a tent, he bought all of the equipment, you know, I mean, because they're, they're circus family. Yeah. Right. So they just happen to have, you know, <laughs> the semi trucks and right. all the equipment and the rigging. And, and, uh, so yeah, that year he asked if we would come and work with him and, uh, we were like, sure. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. And so what year did this circus Espana? Is that correct? Yeah, that is. Yeah. So Circus Espana opened in 2018 in August. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we began here in Dallas. And actually, we stayed around the Dallas area, I believe, for the rest of the year. Yeah. So it was going great um, to begin with. Yeah. But there was, I mean, there's... Just because you're passionate about something or you love something, I I mean, there's so many things that you have to be good at to sustain a business, Mm -hmm. which is the non-glamorous side of the the circus because, you know, it's a family business. So it means that rather than having somebody that is qualified in that area to come and do that, it's like, hey... Right, you're the brother, you're going to go do it. Right, or, right. you know, you, right, you're my wife, so you're going to do this. And, right. you know, so it's a team effort, mm. but it, it's a lot of learning. It's a lot of experience. I mean, it's just, it's been really an amazing experience, yeah. but it's been hard. Yeah, so you're wearing many different hats. Yeah, totally, I, and just learning as you go. And I think you mentioned you were doing some of the costuming. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. yeah. So actually, yeah, when the... <laughs> So when the show opened in 2018, um, my husband's father was like, uh, you're going to do the lights and sound, right? <laughs> and um, he's never done lights and sound, but I mean, he's very interested in it. Yeah. And he knows everything that a circus should have from many years of performing and knowing right. what, because the acts he does a big daredevil act. So okay. he knows what lights the sh- they need. Okay. Okay. So then he did some crash course in lighting <laughs> and uh, he did the lights. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And then so for my part, um, yeah, I costumed it. And uh, I mean, the family helped make all the costumes. We went and bought the fabric and uh, but we kind of designed it. We also bought things. And then really I put the kind of the show together, the the opening, the finale, the dances and wow. And then it was kind of a collaboration of the different artists that came. Okay. And the whole thing was just like, yeah, like making cookies. And just yeah. put it all together and mix right. it up and we just made something. Yeah. And what type of acts do you have in the circus? So this year uh, we have, um, so we have a really cool high wire. Okay. We have the motorcycle on the platform mm-hmm. that I mentioned. We have the Roman rings. Uh, we have a quick change act. We have the Wheel of Death. We have a Washington trapeze. That is so awesome. <laughs> we have contortion hand balancing. Uh, we have roller skates. We have we have uh, one clown who is this little guy. He's mm. funny. Oh, uh, we have a cloud swing as well. Oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah, a lot of acts. So the show this year is a, it's a lot of acts, but they're not like super long, which mm. I really love. Yeah, Because the yeah. show we did before, I did silks. My silks is six minutes. Okay. And then there was a roller bowler that was like eight minutes. Okay. And, but the roller bowler was incredible. Yeah. But so last year, it seemed like there was a lot of like long. There wasn't so many, but they okay. were long. Whereas yeah. this year, they're short and they're just like, bam. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. And does everybody kind of come from a different background or? Yeah, they do. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We also have juggling too. Oh, very cool. So, um, yeah, they do. It's, well, so obviously my background isn't circus. It's, you know, dance. And there's also another uh, lady that works with us who has the same background as me. Oh, very cool. Yeah, she came to dance on Vasquez the year after me. She has the exact same background. Wow. So, uh, and then she met her husband, um, and so they came to work with us, and she retrained too. So, the first year she did the aerial sling. Okay. And then the thing is about the circus is that, I mean, because once you can do one thing, you can do multiple things right. if you want to. 
it was more the company that we kept that we wanted because we loved the the atmosphere because mm. you live on the road 24 7 right. you have to really enjoy the company of the people you're with mm. so we really kept the same team okay but asked if people would be willing to do new things nice so they did she'd done the aerial sling and he was juggling and then for our 2020 show he changed his juggling act to fit to the 1930s because oh, that's cool. that was the show yeah. theme to go 100 years of circus wow and uh she and him they learned the roller skiing so oh okay yeah Very cool. so then they were in the 70s doing the roller skiing nice. yeah so and then the same thing we had one one guy um he was on our prop team um because he had done a tour in canada uh, he was from a high wire family and actually he'd fallen off. And, oh, no. Yeah, and he would needed like a year off. Okay. So he came to work with us because, and you know, he was like, this is my home. You yeah. guys are my family. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, what do you want me to do? Mm. And we're like, are you ready to get back on the high wire? Because <laughs> we really want you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> get him back up yeah, there. So yeah, so please do that. Yeah. So, so there was him. But I mean, the rest of the people are either our family or they are circus family. Okay. Um, yeah. And your husband is a fifth generation yes. circus performer? Yeah. Wow. And you mentioned, how old was he when he started? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> he was three. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Three years old. Uh, I found out yesterday was the first time he was uh, pushed off of the, the flying trapeze. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Three years old, no big deal. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, what a cool way to grow up. Yeah. You mentioned how the shows are themed. How do you yeah. determine the themes of the shows? So we just kind of decide what we wanted. So okay. the 2020 show, actually, we'd really been thinking about it from 2018. So mm. 2018, like wow. I say, it was like we just threw it together and okay. tried to create something. But the idea behind it is to always create something that has some kind of theme so okay. really the 2018 and 2019 was a tribute to kind of the spanish culture that okay. you know comes from my husband's mexican side yeah so we would do you know different <clears throat> like the the lights at the end were kind of you know the mexican flag colors mm -hmm. and we had like a really upbeat spanish song okay. for our finale and, you know, so we were trying all the kind of in-between music was kind of a homage to that. But okay. then we, you know, tried to make it more Americanized. Okay. But keeping that theme. Yeah. Um, and then that turned into something else. Um, but yeah, so for the 2020, we were like, it's 2020. We want to do 100 years. We just, That's it made sense. Idea. Yeah. We were like, from the 1920s, it's such a cool era. And then to showcase, you know, decade, decade by decade, a different, and it just kind of grew from there. Mm. It's really like a collaboration of myself and my husband's idea. Very cool. Yeah. How cool. Very cool. And uh, you mentioned some of the things that have to go on behind the scenes to make it all work. Yeah. What are some of those <laughs> things? Well, some of those things would involve like myself and my sister-in-law. I mean... We literally go out and we do postering and yeah. leafleting. Okay. Uh, we give out kids tickets. So we go wherever we are, we'll go to the town. So we'll next or the one after next, we'll reach out to the school district okay. to offer them the free kid tickets. Nice. We'll um, go out into the community and just kind of go to the daycares, talk with the local businesses, dance schools, anyone who might be interested. We were trying to find different charitable organizations mm. as well to just put on a show, the very first one, for a charitable organization. Nice. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And and typically, how long are you in a place for? So the shortest amount of time is one weekend. Okay. And that's when we hit the really small towns. So oh, okay. We'll do towns that are between four and 5,000 people. Wow. Yeah. What an experience, yeah. though. That's so cool that you'll go there yes. to give that audience yeah yeah and they love really that. love it because oh, I bet. They, you know they usually have to travel really far to go see something right. and there was one town that so in, we did that town for two years in a row mm. 
And the second year we had the same people come back and they were like, we just love that you're here. You know, now we're creating traditions right. with our family. We're going to come every year. Oh. Yeah, it was just like, it was so nice. And so we do from 4,000 to, I mean, to the cities, you know, Houston, right. or Dallas. Um, so, but I think we, as we're figuring out what we like to do, mm -hmm. we do kind of enjoy more of the smaller towns. Yeah, I can see why yeah. for sure. Um, is that most of the promotion that you're doing going into town ahead of time or? Yeah. So we do, um, we'll have like, uh, we have a lady that does, uh, all of our website and she'll do all of our online advertising. Nice. Like if it's with Instagram, mainly Facebook. Yep. Uh, we also do like, you know, the Groupons and yeah. the, the, and we try to get in touch with the city and push it through them as well. Radios as well will do. How are you reaching out to cities? So I will go through like maybe the park and recreation. Okay. Um, and talk with them and see, you know, because one, if they're, if they're not interested in hosting the show necessarily, they still have all of their gyms and their right. recreational centers where they have a lot of kids and they do a lot of events. So, or the bureaus, if there's any travel bureaus, okay. they're also really great because they want things for their, for their community to be able to go and see. Right. So yeah, we'll, we'll reach out to those, uh, any online platforms, you know, for the, what to do in this town. Yeah. Yeah, any of those that they have or what's happening now. There's, yeah, a ton. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And so you're in town for a weekend. If you can, you reach out to a charity and do the first night. Yeah. And then you're there for the next couple of days. Yeah. Something that I really loved was the ticket prices. Yeah. You guys keep them at around $20. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Why? Why? <laughs> That's very affordable. Um, yeah, well, because, I mean, we did have quite a lot of people come to us and say, oh, yeah, you could charge way more for this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the thing is that uh, then you're just kind of really in alienating what you're doing mm -hmm. for one type of person. Because, you know, lots of people have families and lots of people want to come see things and they can't necessarily afford it. And so we want to make it affordable so everybody can come see it. Mm. You know, it's not, we don't want to just be there for people that have lots of money because, you know, they already have more things at their advantage that they can right. do and see. So, and especially when we hit smaller towns, they tend to make less money, people, and we just don't really want to force people to pay a lot of money to come see something that, you know... That they otherwise they won't get to see it right. so yeah so we just keep it there you know just as long as we can make our budget and you know as long as we get people in the door then that's the important thing because as long as we can keep going it do, you know it doesn't i would rather charge 20 than 50 yeah and you know because the point is making people happy yeah and when it's 50 bucks you're making people unhappy because the kids want to come see something right. and then the parents can't afford it right, and right. so you're going against the whole idea of why you're doing it in the first place yeah i love creating a space so that families can come together and like experience this incredible art yeah. that's amazing so you guys just travel well yeah you know Pre, pre this yes. um but you spend a lot of time on the road oh yeah yeah 11 months out of the year usually. wow yeah. wow <laughs> um <laughs> so before we talk about not traveling can you tell me a little bit about traveling as like a circus family and how that is yeah, so, well, everybody lives in their own RVs or their own trailers or motorhomes or whatever. And we do have uh, some, like, bunk houses, which are for people that don't have their own sort of places to live. Yeah. Uh, maybe it might be somebody that has family, you know, in another country and they've just come by themselves. Yeah. So it's better for them because they don't have to pay for anything. Right, Like right. gas or... Yeah. You know, and then they have a place to stay and then we have somebody, you know, that can come work for us. Um, but most people, they come as families. Um, we will, wherever we're going to go work, we will first, you know, park everybody's um, living quarters. Okay. Uh, we have generators. 
we have water connections and hookups that we sort of get with the city okay and okay things like that or if it's a private business they'll they'll provide us a water hookup so when you initially reach out to the city is that kind of also the reason to kind of communicate with them that you're going to be coming or yeah yeah right. and you have to have permits i okay. mean you can't just turn up somewhere yeah, they will right. shut you down yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so you have to do everything the right way and also because you know circus can get in some ways it can have a really bad reputation like okay. a traveling show yeah so we really strive to be as as self-sufficient as possible okay and to be as you know just we leave somewhere exactly as we find it right, right. we want very minimal things we just need a water hookup yeah and the rest we provide everybody okay. lives you know we don't necessarily have rules but everybody knows how they have to live right you know right, um right. Because we wouldn't hire people that didn't know right. how the correct way is. Absolutely. To, to, yeah. To live together because you live very close. You know, you yeah. live like five five feet away yeah. from the next trailer. So you just have to be very um, open and understanding to other people and, you know, friendly. We do a lot of barbecues. Nice. Yeah, yeah. a lot of barbecues or we do like ceviche nights nice. or, you know, margarita nights, whatever. Yeah. I mean, we do things together I I love that it builds that family bond and I'm sure that translates on stage as well yeah so we're kind of in a situation now where we're grounded for most for most everybody uh we're kind of stopped yeah um so when when did you have to shut down and what were you doing at that time so we shut down uh, the second week of March. Mm. And at that point, we were in Pearl Land, which is in Houston. It is about five miles, I would say, from the rodeo of oh, Houston. okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And, but what happened this year is that the Houston rodeo is where they saw the first kind of major outbreak of the COVID happened. Okay. Oh, really? So, yes. Oh, wow. So what happened is we were there. We were working with the city of Powerland, and it was it was a lovely space. Actually, it was during spring break. Oh, right, yeah. right. Yep. Now I remember yep. it was during spring break. Yep. And so the rodeo had announced that they were closing down because uh, somebody had, you know, had yeah. the virus and... And then two days later, they closed us down, the city, right, because right. Uh, because they, of the close proximity to the to the rodeo, and it was just the ethical thing for them to do right, was right. to close all of their events. Like they had a bunch of marathons, they had wow. like there was a dog like event that they had. Okay. I mean, they cancelled everything. Yeah. And looking back, I mean, they were they acted very quickly yeah. and I think that they did a really good thing. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because at that stage, I mean, in March, I, I, I thought we were going to be finished for a few weeks. Right, right. I think we all did. I think we all hoped we would be. So this doesn't mean that, like, everybody just goes home no. because everybody's from everywhere yes so everybody's here right yeah so after that we actually went to our next town okay Uh, we called ahead for the next few towns they were smaller again yeah and we were like uh you know this whole situation is unfolding i mean what do you want us to do do you want us to still come or do you want to cancel and they were like no please come like uh we'll you know, everything is fine here. Right. And, but what happened is we went to the next town, which I believe was Belleville. Okay. And uh, they put the tent up and then a vehicle came and said, put the tent down. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we're closing everything. Uh, so so then we stayed. That was actually at a fairground. Like, because okay. that one, there's like the Bluebell Ice Creamery. Oh, okay. And they have like a ring road. And really? the fairground's right there. Yes. That's cool. I know. I know. And I went there during, when I was doing the handing yeah. out the leaflets. Oh, And I was yeah. like, I can't wait to take my husband and my daughter yeah. to Bluebell. Right. But it was closed when we got oh, there. <laughs> because same. of the COVID. <laughs> I know. So, Another thing, COVID. I know. Bluebell. And, yeah. So then um, we kind of, stayed there for a few days and we really were trying to work out the best option for everyone we were like should we just stay here you know and wait it out and then just restart when we're ready to restart and we we stayed there for a few days and then we were like you know what let's go home 
because uh, we have a property here in you know just outside Dallas mm -hmm. and uh, we're like let's uh so actually what we did is we left all the circus equipment there okay because we were just gonna like continue the tour right and then all the people came and stayed with us here okay and then as more time went on we were like well we should probably go and pick up all the equipment so yeah. now everything is here and originally we had everybody from our show staying here but now uh we still have some but some have like kind of either gone back to be with their families right. or they've uh, gone somewhere else to kind of pick up a different job i right. mean we told everybody we're like you know what uh, we're gonna try our best right to reopen in september yeah but it's for me, it's more of a moral and ethical decision because yes, I mean, we could be open right now. Right. But I feel like it, just in my opinion, it feels immoral mm. because you're attracting people uh, to, to congregate together right. under a space that we don't know that it's safe. Yeah. And it just it just doesn't feel right, right to do that. Right. So we then decide to cancel September and we're going to see about 2021. Yeah. Scary. It's yeah, hard. It's, it's really hard. And I think part of that circus mentality is just going with the flow. Right. You know, I mean, right. it happened and, and we just have to go with the flow. I mean, that's and that's what we're doing. So right. we're here. So <laughs> it's now... <laughs> Almost August. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people are in this situation. It's where it's like, you know, we're just kind of stuck yeah. in limbo of Definitely. not knowing what's going to happen. And and the show that you guys had started yeah. was just at the beginning, oh, right? Yeah, it was oh. eight weeks in. It was, yeah, it was, the, it was the one we were really excited yeah. about. Once things come back to normal, do you think you'll pick that show back up yes yes a hundred percent that's yeah. exactly what we want to do okay we want to say we will and again i mean we're remaining very flexible with the people that work for us because right. maybe you know maybe they've life changes i mean yeah. maybe they end up somewhere else or they decide they don't want to be on the tour anymore you right. know because right. maybe they have picked up a you know like a regular job yeah and so uh, we're opening up to everybody that was working with us and we're just going to go from there. Yeah. Um, but it will be the same show for us. The okay. same, same concept. Very and cool. We'll see what happens with the same people because, yeah. you know, I mean, even though that stood still, life has not stood still. Right, right, it's right. Just, it's, yeah, and it keeps evolving and yeah. it's really hard to tell. So you're thinking 2021. Yeah, we think so. Probably 2021. And really it's made us kind of stop mm. for a moment and take a breath and mm. really think about the kind of future that we want on the road, you know, mm. like, because I mean, we were doing a full year right, and, right. Um, you know, that's like, that's quite hard to sustain oh, yeah. with only a few people running the entire thing. Um, and it really made us reflect about our life, you mm. know, that we want to continue to do that, but maybe just not at the same pace. Yeah, <laughs> I think, and I, as well, I think a lot of people are going through that yeah. being like, you know, maybe I need to slow down right. just a little bit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's as hard as it's been, there's definitely been like silver linings in it. Yeah. Question about the different acts. How do you, how do you find these acts? Is it just kind of word of like this person referring you to another person, family? Yeah. I mean, you know, the circus is a very small industry. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it really goes from, word of mouth or you know if we're looking for something in particular oh but that person does that i know this person for many years and you know she's amazing or he's amazing and so yeah it's um like i said i mean the number one thing we want is good people yeah and then so we try to also fit around sort of to so say with like the hundred years we tried to fear around with some of the people that we really wanted to work okay. uh, with what they do. Okay. So one of the families that we really wanted to work with us, they offered, you know, they offered uh, the wheel and the contortion and we're like, right, we really want this family to come work. So let's put the wheel in the 1980s because okay. it's, you know, yeah. kind of from that era yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's a big metal, yeah. shiny <laughs> ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, we, we changed the music and, and they sort of changed the costuming okay. and, 
you know, so we worked kind of collaboratively with yeah. them to create something that had a bit of both. So Very we kind cool. of go with people that we know or that are referred. And we do get a lot of emails from people looking for work too. Really? Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. cool. So people just reaching out and being like, yeah. hey, this is what I do. Are you looking for this type of person? Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. So now that we're in COVID and we're kind of here, what are you guys doing currently? So currently, um, my husband picked up just a regular, well, what they call a town job. <laughs> <laughs> Which has been refreshing for him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's been amazing for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been really hard because, yeah. well, he's been in the circus his whole life and he's always wanted to do something different. Mm. He's all, but it always just, it pulls him in yeah. some way, you know, yeah. and so this is the first opportunity that he's had where he's like, I have to go out and you know, get a job. Yeah. And so he's just working here in the town. And it's, I mean, it's something like fixing doors. Yeah. And he's really enjoying coming home every day and having a weekend Yeah, and right. Cutting grass. I mean, he's literally loving <laughs> that. And uh, I've, I'm teaching, actually. I'm So I'm coaching at a very cool circus school in Dallas. Uh, they've got the, the summer camp. Yeah, which is really great because so many of the sort of childcare things had closed down right. slash, you know, all the exciting camps that the kids love. So it's been a good space for people to bring their kids. I mean, they don't allow that many. Right, um, right. So it's been really fun yeah. to work with them. Yeah. Yeah. What is the name of the place first? Um, it's called Lone Star Circus School. Okay. Yeah. And how old, what are the age ranges? So the youngest one that I've seen there at the camp has been six years old. Okay. And it goes up to 15, but the oldest I've been teaching has been 12. Nice. So, yeah. They're, they're great kids. And yeah. they keep coming back for multiple weeks. So, I bet. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun as a kid. Yeah. And you're not like like super fearful either as a yeah. kid so <laughs> more like willing to try yeah yeah I'm like no <laughs> no yes. thank you yeah totally they're, they're a little too unafraid yeah, right <laughs> right yeah so they've um, been great and then uh next week we um I'm actually working in collaboration with a local dance school here in Greenville um they want to open up some aerials so we're going to start running uh, Lyra and Silk classes for kids and adults and kind of really expand like her dance school to this. That's you know. really a great marriage, yeah. like uh, a dance school and bringing aerials in. Yeah. Um, so how did how did you create that relationship? Yeah, so there was a lady that reached out to me here in Greenville and she uh, she runs a like a media or she works with a media company and they do short stories of different people that live in oh, her county. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and they reached out and they asked if I would be willing to do an episode. Oh, I was like, sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. So I started the I started to do the episode. I brought them here to where we live. And uh, she told me she had a daughter um, that was homeschooled. Okay. And I was like, okay, we'll bring her along. Yeah. Like, maybe she'll want to get on them and have a go. And um, so they came to film some of the, you know, sort of shots. And the daughter, she came and I, I was teaching her a few little bits. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after the episode was out, I, I got in touch with um, the lady and I was like, you know, if your daughter wants to come in and learn, I'm I'm here. I'm not doing anything. At that point, I wasn't doing anything. Right. And I was like, you know, it'd be great for me because it gives me a, a reason to get on the silks. Right, right. And uh, I would love to spend time teaching her because she was very quick at picking okay. things up. Yeah. So I said, I offered, I was like, just bring her here twice a week and let's, let's do this. Awesome. And she connected me with the lady that opened, that has the dance school. Okay. Very yeah. cool. And so you'll be doing children and area, uh, adult classes there. Yes. And so how are you, you're kind of going in and developing their whole program. Yeah. Correct. Yes. And, and putting in the rigging and everything like yeah. that. So can you tell me a little bit about that process? Yeah. So, I mean, circus is just like, it's an incredible incredible industry mm. and it's very diverse and it's you know it's really it 
it's really turned into this this huge spectrum Mm -hmm. and so within kind of the traditional circus you know there's not many protocols for what to do I mean everybody has their way that they train that's right. probably been passed down through generations yeah but there isn't necessarily you know like uh this is what we do at this age and this is how we teach this and this is how we teach that and then you have the circus schools where they do have more of teaching fundamentals right but not necessarily I haven't so been exposed to anywhere that really follows, uh, you know, the same set mm. curriculum. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things always have different names. They always have right. different teaching styles. And I think that's cool when you've got great teachers because they're always going to try. Right, right. Um, but with this school, because it's starting at the very beginning, I really want to pay close attention to you know, doing everything exactly the right way. Mm. You know, with the strengthening, I've learned a lot at the camp this year. Yeah. That, you know, you can teach these really cool things to the kids, but, you know, they can't really develop any further until they develop their strength. Mm. Mm -hmm. So really we're going backwards, you know. Right, right, right. So I would prefer to go forward and uh, start with very basic fundamentals, Mm. which, you know, also when you are in the circus, you're not exposed to very beginner type movements. Right, right, yeah. So you're kind of, I've, I'm working backwards because, right, right. you know, I started off doing, you know, kind of more advanced things. Yeah. And then I really had to tone it back because I see that the kids, they just, I mean, they can't get the things you know, that are very, and, and it's not the right way either. Right, right. So, yeah, Dangerous. I found a curriculum as I was researching um, the Born to Fly curriculum. Very cool. And uh, I'm going to, I reached out to, to them and I'm going to use their fundamentals and their training tools um, to make sure that the kids really get a good a good start. Yeah, and that creates longevity in their circus yeah. plays. How did you find Born to Born to Fly? Actually, I was, so I was doing a lot of research online. Okay. So I just found them online. I was looking for something very specific because I don't want to go and do a course. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go somewhere and and learn something like that. You know, I already have, you know, all of my basic fundamentals and go up to advance. Right. But what I want is to know how to get the kids from the very beginning Mm. there. And that's what she has in her curriculums, you know, that just from, you know, the sort of safety uh, movements, the warm ups, the how to explain sort of different grips, how to, you know, because say, for instance, with the silks, I mean, you have to pull up. Right. right. And it's hard to get from nothing to a pull up. Yeah. And that's where I need the help because Mm. I want to know how to get them there. Okay. Very interesting. Glad that you're focused on the fundamentals. I feel like that really does build like such a strong dancer. And if you have that stuff, then it makes the advanced stuff later on so much easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I I just, uh, I'm really excited to see how it's going to turn out. Yeah. Um, What ages are you starting at? Um, We're going to start at four. I I don't really want to go any younger than four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't blame you trying to get yeah. a three-year-old to do anything, yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it would need to be, um, yeah, four, so they can take instructions and, yeah, yeah keep it safe. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And when you found the space, what types of things did you have, are you going to have to add into the space to make it aerial? Yeah, so that was another, that was another moment. <laughs> so the lady that owns the dance school, she's amazing. She's really cool. And she's very excited. And so we went there, my husband, I mean, he, he has his whole sort of life experience for rigging okay and um, because he does all the big acts i right. mean it's super important he knows everything yeah about everything <laughs> so uh, obviously i took him there and i'm like come and uh, investigate this place is it even safe to hang okay you know because this is something there's you know yeah. i mean that's the dynamic first. drops yeah. And, yeah. yeah and um so we went there and 
he wasn't exactly sure and he needed more, you know, to be able to get into the ceiling, definitely have a look right, at everything. Right. And they do have sort of a good beam. However, in this process, I got talking to the person that actually owned the building. Okay. And they did not like <sighs> the idea of somebody hanging up of the ceiling. So to begin with, they started with the attitude of like, oh, of course you could hang a person off of there. It's a building structure. I mean, yeah, like, you know, it, it withholds, you know, tornadoes. Yeah. Why? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then once you answer the why, they're like, oh, well, uh, uh, I don't know about that. You know, that doesn't sound safe. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't. Oh. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and my husband told me, he's like, you know what people are like. Yeah. Like, why right. did you say anything? <laughs> like, just let us figure it out. Anyway, so long story short, they did agree that we could use um, the their ceiling but there, there is only one main beam. Okay. So my husband is going to construct uh, like a trussing. Okay. Yeah. In yeah. the room, and um, they're gonna weld the whole thing. We have we have a family here that's staying with us from the circus, and they weld really well. Awesome. So they've actually created a structure, and we're gonna use that. So we don't use anything to do with their building. And that way we can have as many points as we want. Nice. And it's just like, it's better for us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And so what is the plan as far as like opening? Um, uh, we open next Thursday. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> That's so exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to, this weekend, we're going to sort of uh, get everything in there, test everything out, get everything the right heights, exactly how we want them. Uh, put the right flooring down, everything. So, and um, yeah, Thursday. Wow. Yeah. So crazy that this is happening right now before it's so weird. And I love that about the lady that owns it, that there's all this going on and she's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to expand. Yeah. And, and I'm going to, you know, I mean, it's, we're creating a safe environment as much as we right. can. And this is, you know, this is not... It's near Dallas, yeah. but it's not exactly in Dallas. And so I imagine there's not a whole lot of opportunity out here oh, for no. areas. Yeah. No, so no. I think it totally makes sense uh, giving kids a place to go, giving adults a place to go to kind yeah. of work work that stuff out and take a break. Yeah. Totally makes sense. I mean, sense. for the mental health of everybody, mm. especially with what's going on. Yeah. I mean, we're at a point right now where it's like, I mean, the virus is bad, but yeah. also, I mean, people's mental health is bad. Yeah. So you have to find something. Right, right. And there's definitely ways to do this and, and maintain safety yeah. and social distance and, and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything that you're doing to promote the the new space? Or she, since she's already established, is she kind of helping with that? Yeah, so she's, uh, she's out there. She's promoting with her dance school and uh, I think online as well. For me, I haven't done too much at the moment. But I want to see once I get there... Uh, I would really like to do some <laughs> some old school circus leafleting in the area. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm just, I'm not a very big social media person. I feel you. I'm terrible at social media. I'm... That's why we have the lady from the circus. Yep. Because I just... I don't like documenting everything that I do. I, do. I struggle <laughs> with it. I'll like take the pictures myself, but then yeah. I'll never post them. Yeah. It's, I'm terrible about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, awful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I feel that. So when you can, you'll be out there yeah. old circus style. Once it's happened, I'll be there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right, once it's right. Happened, I'll right. be all over it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I am really excited the next time I come around to come and visit and take a class. That's that would amazing. be great. We'd yes. love to have you. Oh yeah, definitely. So kind of wrapping things up, I want to ask the question that I ask everybody, and that's, what do you do for fun? Oh, ooh, what do I do for fun? Um, so, fun, well, obviously, <laughs> like to play around on all the equipment. Yes, <laughs> get to try all the yeah. things. So cool. Um, and then I like to bake. Um, okay. Yeah, I was making cookies as you can. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I love to bake. 
and uh, we love to barbecue me and my husband we like to eat so <laughs> love to make good food yeah. um i just started a garden actually this year as we're here in right. march i started a veggie garden nice what are so, you growing uh watermelons tomatoes jalapenos eggplants nice onions some of it's a bit of a fail <laughs> right. but i've enjoyed it yeah <laughs> exactly i we have plants that we collected from our friends before we left and we go outside and we oh, talk to them every morning you should. yeah it helps yeah, they yeah. really are flourishing yeah it's, it's cool oh, very great. cool and uh, another question what is a favorite performance of yourself that you've done Oh, um, like something that I did that I really enjoyed. Yeah, something Ooh, your I've, favorite that you've done. Oh, I have so many that oh, I really enjoy. Really? You yeah. can name a couple. That's okay. totally fine. Well, one of them was in South Africa. Okay. Um, because they opened, uh, the show we were working for, they opened like a water circus. <gasps> really yes that's so cool oh my god it was it was very cool um and i loved it because i mean you know south africa was amazing and you know they filled out it was in a casino and they had a a theater in the casino and they filled out the audience and for me uh when i did the silks um i just put all my new music together okay and i really just kind of like made everything my own yeah. and just like and people really responded to it. They loved mm. it. And that was just like so great. Yeah. And I know here in the States a lot, you know, people have, they've, they've seen a lot already. Yeah. Whereas in South Africa, they haven't. Mm. So they were just really excited by the silks. They loved it. Okay. And I loved that. Yeah, that um, vibe. Yeah. And I also got to work in a giant water cup. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in the air. So it started in like the water and then they lifted up and then they had loads of holes in the bottom. And so the water would come oh out. Oh my god! But we'd start in a giant bowl of water and uh, and then we'd do like sort of different tricks and things inside. It was really that's fun. That's so cool. Is there a video of that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. There's okay. some pictures for sure. Okay. Um, and it's hilarious. We're wearing like, because we didn't want to get our hair ruined, <laughs> wearing like the swimming caps. The swimming caps, caps. yeah. Yeah. Um, That's great. So yeah, that was a favorite. And okay. And in uh, New Zealand with the same company, they had really cool uh, dances that okay. all the aerialists kind of did. Mm. They, but their productions were really, they were just so interesting. So they, we had one costume that we were candles. Okay. And they were like these giant heads, like <laughs> these hats that yeah. were like maybe two to three feet wow. big. And then we had like these big dresses and they went out. And they were huge. And, and all you could really do was walk around. <laughs> but it was just so funny. I just loved that. Like that they they had like really interesting. Yeah. They had costumes with where we wore Eiffel Towers. Whoa. I know. Like just very random. And, That's so And cool. crazy. And so I really enjoyed doing all the productions yeah. of their circus. That was really fun. That's so cool. When watching your videos, I really love your style. I love how you always take the silks and kind of let them out, oh, like on the you. sides. It's so, so beautiful. And thank your you. lines are so clean. I try. Really. No, it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, and your favorite performance or a favorite. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, favorite performance of someone else. It doesn't oh, have to be yeah. of all time, but just someone that sticks of out. Some, so some. Oh God, I have so many, but yeah. one that I can really think of that I uh, enjoyed a lot was the High Wire when I was in Canada. Um, it was a husband and wife, and um, they're a lot older. Okay. And it doesn't look like they could do what they could do. <laughs> yeah. But it was insane. Okay. Yeah, like uh, the lady, she would like um, balance the guy on her shoulders. What? Yes, on the high um, wire. Whoa. Yeah, he would jump on her <gasps> on the high wire, and she would sing. Wait. She, yeah, she would sing. It was amazing. That's incredible. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was very good. Uh, is there a video of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I okay. try and show people because it's just so yeah, cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. So she sings and she's got a really nice voice. And uh, and then they climb up. But they don't climb up like the, you know, they have like a wire that they climb up 
to get onto the wire. They do all this crazy stuff. And then the best part is the end where the guy, and he's really small, and he puts his wife onto his shoulders and he climbs down the... No. Like, yes, the descending wire. It's really cool. And it's really long and that really sticks out for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'll put it, in the, put it in the show notes. <laughs> that's so awesome. Well, thank you again so much thank for you. letting me come hang out with you <laughs> and buy your printer. Um, <laughs> It's been so lovely to meet you, and I can't wait to come visit the circus and the school. Yes, yeah. I hope you get to come see it. Yes, yeah. we'll be back around next year, and we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Aerial Hour. If you enjoyed this episode or learned something new, I want to hear about it. Your words and feedback fuel this show, so here are three simple ways you can support The Aerial Hour. Number one, hit subscribe so you never miss a new episode. Number two, share a screenshot on your IG stories of your favorite takeaway from this episode, tagging at the Aerial Hour. I absolutely love seeing these posts. And number three, write us a review. This is the ultimate way to support the show, and it will only take a couple of minutes. You can leave a review on Apple Podcast or on our Facebook page. I'll be shouting out a new reviewer each week, so make sure to drop yours in there. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next time. I sat there <laughs> and I felt very talentless. <laughs> <because> I was... <laughs>